Hi Bowen Duveputi we are in another beautiful session it's going to be chapter number 3 and for the second time we will learn about this chapter number 3 this is grade 10 science as per the sri lankan government school syllabus and structure of matter is in front of you and for the second time we are learning this structure of matter and today we will talk about the planetary model of the atom now one scientist we talked about who had introduced this theory of atom and we are going to learn another scientist who had valid that theory and then after that we will come to know certain things about an atom and then after that we also will find out the difference between two important term that is so confusing for student the term which is atomic number versus mass number atomic number versus mass number also we are going to learn at the end of the session so let's get into the subject and see what we have to learn now before we learn and deeply we have something that we want to do that you remember that in our last session we ask you that is air energy or matter and we ask you to prove it you remember that one now i'm here to do that one the answer for that question is the air is matter because nitrogen oxygen argon and other various gases in the environment it got its own mass nitrogen has its mass oxygen has its mass gases and argon also got their own masses so as all these got masses individually nitrogen oxygen gases and argon and everything is in the air air is also becoming with masses so that says air is a matter so we answered that question scientifically and we'll learn further about the today's lesson if you see this very closely this model it just look like our solar system where the earth and all the other planets are revolving around the sun that is the reason that the scientist definitely ernest rutherford who's in the picture said that the planetary model of the atom the planetary model of the atom was introduced by this scientist thanks for him the ernest rutherford <laughs> Now I have a question in front of you why do electrons not fall on the nucleus okay now these electrons are moving around one path in a planetary model but the center is there in the nucleus why this electrons are not falling on we are going to find the answer for that question electrons move around the nucleus in which the positive charge of the atom is concentrated you know in the center the positive charge is there and the electrons are carrying negative charge you know about it though electrons are attracted by the positive charge of the nucleus yes it is attracted therefore it should definitely go you know that two magnets when you are keeping very close it is getting attracted so they are the same question they are asking why it is not attracted like this plus and minus now the answer for that question is here yeah, they do not fall on the nucleus because electrons revolve very very fast around the nucleus it is running pretty fast around the nucleus okay so for that reason it is not falling on to the nucleus if it is falling on to the nucleus there will be something else happening to us and every things which is made out of an atom now he is another gentleman just like rutherford he is telling something else and he is finding out something about the atom that's a good one yes neil bohr what neil bohr says is neil bohr who is the person who further elaborated the rutherford's model stated that the electrons move in definite path or shells around the positively charged nucleus now this person is the person who said that okay fine it is moving a planetary way but there is some ways are there that the electrons are moving we are going to understand that one So thanks to Neil Bohr we came to know that the, around the nucleus there are shells like this shells number 1 shell number 2 shell number 3 shell number 
and shell number five you know him as s one two three four five or you can name as klmn now around this path the electrons are moving this was fine by niel bohr the shells are also known as energy level so this is first energy level second energy level third energy level fourth and fifth energy levels now each energy level has a specific energy that means five four three two one these got different different energies which one has more energy the answer is coming when moving away from the nucleus so that means we have to move away from the nucleus when we are moving away from the nucleus the energy is increasing that says five is the most and then after that four after that three three is more energy than two two has more energy than one so now you understood how the energy is increasing from the nucleus towards this side now number of electrons in each energy level we want to find out okay we have all this nucleus from that nucleus we have all these shells or the energy levels how many numbers of electrons are there in one two three four five it goes on like that in first second third fourth and fifth now we are going to understand that one as we know that the energy level is increasing from the nucleus number of electrons in each energy level also will have a different number the first level has two okay the first level has how many two energy and then after that when you are moving the second energy level has eight and the third one it has 18 and the fourth and the final one as per your lessons it is over here 32 energy level is there to 8 18 32 it is increasing like that now number of electrons in each energy level is changing and as per the power it is changing definitely the first one the maximum uh, number of electrons it can carry is two in the second one the maximum electrons it can carry is eight and in the third one the maximum electron it can carry is 18 and the last one as per your lessons 32 now next is about atomic number versus most number let's talk about sodium here when we are talking about sodium we have 11 protons and 12 neutrons in the sodium so the atomic number is said with the equal number of protons so we got 11 over here and 11 is mentioned as well here and the mass number is the calculation of 11 proton and 12 neutrons that comes as 23 so if somebody wants to say what is the atomic number you want to find out the atoms protons and if somebody wants to ask what is the mass number you have to calculate the both protons and the neutrons so the proton is 11 and 23 is the protons and neutron therefore the mass number and atomic numbers said very clearly you understood in a neutral sodium atom the number of protons will be 11 so it's always equal you remember that one we already spoke about it protons and elect electrons are equal therefore how many number of e electrons will be there yes 11 number of electrons will be there as it is 11 proton now how it is placed that's the next question how that is placed it's over there it's placed very nicely in the first shell it is 2 the second shell 8 plus 2 is equal to 10 and then 1 is balance which is 1 over here in the outer shell so 2 8 1 so we came to know about that one the mass number of sodium is 23 and atomic number is 11 is written like this Z is always atomic number and the above it's written as the mass number so the when you are writing sodium as here 23 and 11 when it is coming like that the uppermost is mass we as uppermost is mass number which is number of protons and neutrons and the bottom is it atomic number 11 that is atomic number as proton is equals to electrons in this sodium 11 protons 11 electrons and 12 neutrons available we will learn about these things further also in our next session until then 
Bye-bye and take care of yourself.